Science can be a lot of things. It can be really complex, but at its very core, science begins with one thing, asking a question. Through this video series, we're going to answer questions. Your questions. Me? Yes, you. So come with us behind the scenes where we'll be up close and personal with some amazing animals and the scientists working to save them at Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. So get ready to dive in to another episode of Other Duties as Assigned, The Secret World of Zoo Jobs. Do you need to be a biologist to work at the zoo? No, I'm not. Hi, my name is Jen Daniels and I'm the landscape architect and zoo's fortune teller at the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. So I know what you're thinking. What does it mean to be a zoo fortune teller? It doesn't involve crystal balls and palm reading, but what it does involve is collaboration, planning, and design. And unlike regular fortune tellers, after I predict the future, I work to make that future a reality. The National Zoo sits on 163 acres of land in the heart of Washington, D.C. That's about the size of 75 football fields. And if you pack them in tightly, you could fit just over 315 White Houses inside our gates. My job as the landscape architect is to design those 163 acres. That includes not only the animals and the people, but also concessions, parking spaces, offices, trash cans, benches, carousel, you name it. As I am sure you can imagine, all of this designing is more than a one-person job. I work with all parts of the zoo to find just the right balance to meet the needs of the people, the land, and of course, our animals. How do we do this? First, we take a look into the future. We consult the master plan. As the zoo's fortune teller, this is what I see when I look into my crystal ball. 20 years from now, that's 2034. This is what the National Zoo could look like. When we plan and design the National Zoo of the future, we work with the entire zoo staff, from scientists and zookeepers to horticulturists and maintenance crew, to decide which exhibits are going to be built or changed and where those exhibits will go. Which brings us to the birdhouse, our next big project at the National Zoo. The original birdhouse was built in 1928 and was last renovated in the 1960s. Now, over 50 years later, it's time for another change. A reimagined birdhouse will tell the story of the phenomenon of migration. To communicate my ideas for new spaces in the zoo, I use many different tools. Some of those tools are design software and something as simple as pen and paper. But my most important tools are my hands, my feet, and my eyes. I walk the zoo at least once a day, sketch and take notes, and observe everything around me. While working on this new space, we're not just drawing out what we want the final product to be. We're also choosing which materials to use, researching the animals that will be going into the exhibit, looking at things from the visitor's perspective, and thinking about what stories we should tell for each animal. We want every space in the zoo to be safe, reflect the animal's natural habitats, and create an enjoyable experience for our visitors. In order to do this, we need to take into account each and every detail of the space. When considering the human side of designing a zoo, we can simply talk to people to get their opinions. With animals, though, that's a different story. They create an exciting challenge. They can't just come right out and tell us what they want in their habitat. We have to rely on research and observation. We look at each animal's natural habitat. Do they live in an area that's sandy, grassy, rocky, or something else when in the wild? We look at their natural behaviors. Are they frequently climbing, in water, or digging? And we take into account any additional needs that the animal may have. Do they need to be kept at a certain temperature? If outside, might they try to eat native plants in their exhibit? Or are they mostly solitary or social? All of these elements and more go into creating a space that allow the animals to thrive. Now that I've had a chance to tell you about the work that I do, it's time for you to ask the questions. What do you want to know about predicting the future of the National Zoo? How do you end up in the position you're in today? So, unlike the zoo, I didn't have a master plan. I studied anthropology and then got a master's in landscape architecture, but there were a whole lot of twists and turns along the way. 
I was a semi-professional ballet dancer. I speak Russian. Do you have fun at work? Of course, I get to hang out with elephants whenever I want to. What is your favorite animal? My favorite animal is probably the caracal. The caracal is mysterious, a little edgy, and he has beautiful ears. Thanks for spending some time with me in my world of landscape architecture, also known as zoo fortune telling. I predict a zoo visit in your future. See you then. Ever wonder how the zoo decides which animals to bring in, move to another zoo, or breed? Then be sure to tune in to our next episode where we'll go behind the scenes with one of the National Zoo's curators and talk about managing animals and making babies. Like what you just watched? Share this video with your friends and submit questions for future programs in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for another episode of Other Duties as Assigned, The Secret World of Zoo Jobs.